Good morning and welcome to our April webinar. We are so glad that you could be here. Um, we hope that you've had a great spring break if you've already had yours or if you're currently on spring break, we hope that you're enjoying a nice one. Um, we also hope that everyone had a great time watching the eclipse yesterday. What a great and amazing experience. Robin and I are going to swap some seats today, and um, I'm going to be your facilitator for this webinar, and uh, then we're going to uh, meet a couple great people, and then we'll wrap up with our data moment. So today, we are going to feature another school district in our Spotlight series. We have the opportunity to talk with two wonderful people from the Beachwood Independent Schools, Sarah Schobel, the Director of Curriculum, and Stephanie Layton, their Business and University Liaison. Welcome to Sarah and Stephanie. Why don't you take a minute to introduce yourselves and why you believe the Beachwood Edge program is so special and what you do there. Hi, I'm Sarah Schobel. Um, as she said, Director of Curriculum at Beachwood. Um, this is my seventh year with Beachwood Independent Schools. I'm very grateful to be with you all today. Um, and why I think the Beachwood Edge is special, um, it's something that I think in education we see fads a lot and something comes and goes and here's the new acronym and here's the new thing for a year or two. Um, and this is something we have been working on for seven years um, and has stayed consistent. It continues to evolve, um, but it's all about 100% of kids, not just a certain group or certain populations, um, getting experiences that will best prepare them for their future, whether it's college uh, and or career, whatever post-secondary opportunity, um, equipping them with skills to be ready for that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Stephanie Layton. Um, I'm the business and university liaison at Beachwood. Uh, so I, um, I, I think I have the best job in the school. Um, I get to work with our teachers and our students and then also uh, connect them to our local business and university partners. Um, and the reason that I think that is such a critical piece for the EDGE uh, program, um, the EDGE mindset, is to know that our students are really going to be prepared. They've they've met some of our business partners around the community. Um, they've made those connections, so we know that they're going they're going to have the skills, the um, and the soft skills too, to be ready for that next step. Thank you so much. Um, I have a ton of questions for you about the program because it sounds so innovative and you seemingly have built something that is incorporating traditional education, early post-secondary opportunities, pathways, and business pipeline needs all into one program. So it's amazing. Um, but I'm going to, before I start asking questions, I'm sure you're going to answer a lot of them. I'm going to turn the webinar over to you um, because you've put together a great presentation for us that will likely answer a lot of these questions. And for those of you who are in the audience, if you have questions today, feel free to put them in the Q&A. And when the webinar is over, we'll get the answers to you. So I'm going to turn, I'm going to, well, I've stopped sharing. So I'm going to turn it over to you and you can now share your screen. Okay. Can you see uh, everything okay, Trinity or Stephanie? Yeah. Yep. So looks good. Perfect. Okay. Um, good morning uh, again, everyone. So uh, the Beachwood EDGE program um, stands for Educational Design Geared Towards Experience. And so what we had found was um, kind of students were often in two pathways. They were headed to college or headed to career, but they were missing some benefits of both, um, whether it was really rigorous academic content or whether it was our students kind of on the college path missing out on a lot of that experiential learning um, and that skill development that we know students need for their future in the 21st century. Um, so I will say to start out that typically um, we take at least uh, an hour to go through this. So if some of it seems like we're going through quickly, um, we're just trying to hit some of the high points and we're more than happy to talk to any of you all um, in the future or you're welcome to come visit. Um, we talk to people about this all the time. We have visitors all the time. Um, so we would love to talk with you more, see how we can collaborate, um, see how something like this could maybe um, fit your district. We certainly know that we are a small district 
um, and we are in Northern Kentucky. Um, Fort Mitchell, if you're not familiar, is right near Cincinnati. Um, and so we do have a lot of industry around us, a lot of business. Um, we have some unique challenges um, to us, and then we have some things that made implementing this um, a bit easier. Uh, we are a high performing district, so we were able to take a bit more risk without worrying as much about test scores and things like that to try um, new ways of learning, uh, new models of learning, new structures in place. Um, and so, however, there, that also added some additional pressures of, well, why would we change anything? Uh, everything's going really well. We're doing well. Why would we change how we're learning? So uh, I think with every district, there's probably things that'll be challenges uh, that are unique to you and things that make uh, that are strengths for you. Um, and so we really saw a need that even though um, we were a high academic performing institution, that our students weren't necessarily uh, developing skills for their future. We saw that there were um, oh, there was a lot of compliance. Uh, we called it a lot of playing school well, um, that wouldn't necessarily help students help young people be ready for life after high school when they leave us. Um, and so our Beachwood Way um, seven years ago was developed, and this is kind of uh, our mission and vision rolled into one and not something that's just up on a wall or in a piece of paper, um, but something that we use every day, uh, every month, staff, students all know it as part of every recognition, every um, meeting that we have. But just one piece that um, to stick out to you is um, how do we develop globally competitive students? We are no longer in a world where we just are in our Fort Mitchell bubble, um, but we are uh, a global society. Students have connections, even what we're able to do today. Um, in interacting with others. So how do we prepare them for that type of future? Um, and as you know, jobs that we don't even um, know what they might be yet. And how do we focus on that skill development? So our first step um, was looking at, okay, with if we're preparing students for the future, we need to talk to those people that are working with um, life after high school. So we talked to so many business and university partners saying, what do you want from our students? Um, what do you need our students to be able to do? Um, so you probably have heard 21st century skills, soft skills, employability skills. Um, that's basically what we were looking to develop for Beachwood. Um, and so we, you can research that. You can see all different um, things online for those skills. So we wanted to talk to people um, in our region and say, what do you want from our kids? We are preparing your future employees. We are preparing your future students. Um, so what do you need from them? And so from their feedback, we developed what we call our core concept. Concepts, um, and you can see those listed here. And this was our foundation uh, for the EDGE program. How were we going to teach these core concepts? Um, and what we uh, know is that this happens a lot in education, these skills. A lot of it happens organically, um, unintentionally. They're practicing collaboration. But when and how are we really teaching those skills and giving them opportunities to practice those skills? How are we assessing those skills? And so that's what we wanted to come up with a way to do that. And I will say, and um, I know we're going through quickly, but this was definitely a process. It does not look the same seven years in as it did when we started. So this is kind of how we started. Of, okay, this is what we want to do. Where do we want to go? How we get there has evolved every year. Um, and we've kind of added new components every year. We also are seeing kids more and more ready uh, with these skills because of the experiences that they're having. So we continue to have to raise the bar um, of what we expect, what types of experiences that we're giving them um, because they're coming to us more ready, which is really uh, neat to see. So how to start, uh, as you know, implementation and change uh, in education or anywhere can be difficult. So we had to uh, start with somewhere that there was some flexibility um, and a proof of concept. And so we felt like um, in our district, and it might look different for yours, the middle grades had some flexibility um, where we could take time in their day uh, to implement a new course. We also had found with change, if you try to take something that's already there and change it, uh, that can be difficult versus implementing something brand new. So rather than going to an Algebra One teacher and say, we went to embed all of this experiential learning. Instead, we started a brand new course called Seminar where it would be completely challenge-based. And what I mean by challenge-based, and we'll give you some examples throughout the presentation, is uh, some people call it project-based, some people call it problem-based. Um, 
similar, close uh, nuances, um, but we went with challenge-based because project, we didn't want it just focused on the outcome. And talking to our business and university partners wasn't just about getting something done and the, the product at the end, the project. It's about the process too. We also didn't want to focus on problem that can have a negative connotation. So challenge was what we went with. Um, but regardless of what you call it, it's experiential learning. Um, every challenge has a business or university partner, a community partner involved. So these are authentic challenges that the students are going through and solving. What does it look like to solve a challenge? Um, this is the iterative design process um, that came from Stanford. And so um, you can see there that, again, this process is important. Going through failure is important. Prototyping is important. Um, knowing that it's not just I'm completing a task, checking a box, and I'm finished. Um, the only part that we did add was that presentation um, part at the end. And that's because in talking to our partners, we felt it was really important that they didn't just complete, like I said, the project, but how are they communicating their results um, out? And so maybe that looks like a typical presentation, maybe that's shared in some other way um, or electronically, but how are we communicating both our product and our process? Um, and so that has been important throughout. The seminar course is fifth through eighth grades for us um, that Stephanie will talk about uh, a bit more. But as you'll see some things on here, and we're, we will share this link, happy to share this link to the slides um, if you would like it. There's some details of like planning out a challenge through the template, that type of thing. But no homework in this seminar class, um, ungraded in the seminar class in the middle grades. So immediately we had questions about, well, the kids aren't going to want to work. They're not going to want to complete things. They're not going to be motivated. Um, and what we found, um, to say it briefly, is that uh, students, when it is they're working for an authentic purpose, um, a challenge with a partner, and they know that that partner is coming back, that doctor, that uh, transportation department, um, that person is coming back and uh, going to give them feedback that they're going to have to present to these people, um, that all of those worries have not occurred. They have been motivated. They've done the work without having assigning homework, uh, knowing deadlines, teaching those skills of uh, planning and being strategic and working backwards. Students are working on their own uh, outside of hours. And now that becomes so much easier with things um, like the Google suite of products. Um, so students are doing that on their own to be able to solve these challenges um, and be prepared to work with their external partner. And if you think about, um, one of our colleagues always says it in a, in a good way, if you think about when school, we do, okay, I'm going to teach you this, you're going to practice this, I'm going to give homework, then I'm two weeks later, I'm going to give you a test on it. That's really not how most of our lives look uh, in the workforce. Um, and so how do we give students more of an authentic experience of here's a challenge you have to solve. You have to work with others in different ways, and that can take a variety of forms. Uh, you have to get feedback. Okay, I need to fix this. I need to make this better. And then you have to share that out in some way. That's a much more realistic picture of what students will have to do in their future. Now, I will pause and say really quickly that um, we talked about balance all the time throughout this. We weren't saying we need to swing the pendulum and change everything what we're doing in education. Our core content, our English, math, science, social studies, our focus on AP, our focus on ACT, all of that was still in place. We couldn't let that go. Um, that's still super important for our kids' future. But we also needed to be able to give them experiences during the day with this experiential learning. Um, we needed to be sure that they weren't just in their seats seven hours a day doing that type of rote learning. So how do we embed some of these um, experiences throughout. And so um, again, Stephanie will talk a little bit more, but seminar middle grades fifth through eighth for us was our way to have a course in their day every day um, where they could be doing entirely challenge-based learning. And what we found from there was that um, students and teachers, um, students were craving it more if they wanted to do this type of learning. Teachers started to see an English class, wait, why are our kids working together better? Oh my goodness, they're presenting better. They were seeing some of these skills transfer into their core content areas. So they wanted to know more. They wanted to try more. So we knew it was time to then um, bleed it down into elementary and up into the high school, um, which Stephanie will share with you. 
So um, thank you, Sarah. Um, so those seminar courses that the students are, are um, participating in are allowing them to really dive into some of our, not only the core concepts, but um, what become the high school minors. So again, these courses are ungraded, but they are presenting students with the um, the skills that they need to present, um, to um, work through problem solving. Um, and that that presentation piece, and Sarah pointed out how that was added on to our iterative design, um, we feel that not only is the end presentation important, but that piece in the middle there where we get feed, give and get feedback. Um, when she talked about how how we work, you know, I think any and this the slide presentation that we put together, you know, um, Sarah and I back and forth said, hey, what should we add? What should we do? It, we're giving each other feedback. Um, we all do that throughout the day. And we wanted our students to be um, better about learning how to give and receive that feedback because we know that that only makes our work better. So um, by the time the students get to the seventh and eighth grade seminar courses, um, they are again, these are these are not graded courses, but they are allowing them to dive into um, what will be the high school minors. Um, so throughout um, throughout the year, they have um, each quarter, they're going to do a challenge that's based around those. Now, sometimes they partner with, um, you know, the high school teachers in addition to the uh, a business partner in each of those areas. Um, we've developed a great list of partners that uh, that can work with us on that, and they are um, they have been fantastic. I say this a lot, but I think this helps the content stick with them if they're not only being um, tested, as we talked about, but actually helping it like find it its relative purpose. So within the high school. Um, well, Beachwood High School is seventh through a twelfth grade, but we have um, when I'm talking about high school on from ninth grade moving forward, students can choose a minor. Now, I think this is pretty cool about the Edge program here at Beachwood. You are not tracked here in these minors. This is not something that you start in one and you are locked in for the rest of um, ninth through twelfth grade. You have the freedom to move around. However, if you are, you know, really know that engineering is your thing, there is a three-year course of study. So student, that idea lab there, that is um, a lab space with both um, design and implementation where students can move through the high school and those develop courses or take courses around, um, around that minor. And then their fourth year, they would take and have an internship. So our seniors are all have an option to take an internship. We have consistently kept around 70% of our classes um, taking internships outside of the building. Um, when we talk, Sarah mentioned also about, um, you know, things that have changed over the years and we keep adding. Um, this is, we have been, I, we're gonna have to make a new slide here, Sarah, because we keep adding, you know, great new options for our students. And the other thing I wanted to point out is, again, our school is small, but the way we've built these minors here is these are our elective courses. So we call them minors, our majors, uh, obviously, if you're gonna call them, that is, is our core content courses, our AP classes. Um, but you will see that some of our AP fit nicely into, um, into these minors. So that year four, you have the option of internships as well as dual credit and um, our defensive learning as well. We go. Did I go backwards? Sorry. <laughs> uh, do you are you going to go on to employability, or do you want to talk about yes, some? Yes. Right yes. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, in addition um, to uh, working with our teachers and uh, bringing in business partners, one of the things that that I work on here at Beachwood is employability coaching, um, and that really starts through the elementary. We are we are pre K through twelve district. Um, so we bring partnerships in from into the elementary school as well. So that talent pipeline really starts early for us. Um, we have business partners, we have um, community partners, uh, university to uh, help students with that challenge work. Um, our students also participate from seventh through twelfth grade in youth science. 
helping them learn their aptitudes as well as their interest. We work with our, especially our sophomores through seniors on those soft skills. Again, they align nicely with the Beachwood core concepts, um, but in professionalism and communication, as well as confidentiality and ethics, which is super important if they have interest in careers like healthcare or IT or financial planning. Um, you know, we have a lot of students who go into those careers um, for internships, and we need to make sure that they understand um, confidentiality, HIPAA laws, et cetera. Uh, we also work with our students on resume writing, mock interviews. We have those coming up next Monday uh, with our juniors. Um, we stop in on those in at those internships uh, site sites so that we can make sure things are going well for the students. Um, again, feedback for the from the internship mentors. We want our students to hear that. Um, and then those, even if you're not involved in an internship, that's okay. Um, we always work to have a student have. Um, have a job shadow if they are, you know, especially if they get into something and they're thinking, hmm, I'm not sure this is for me. Let me test some other things out. We want them to be able to have that experience as well. Oops. Sarah, did you have the defensive learning? Yeah, can we hit seventh and eighth grade seminar real quick? Yes. While you talk about the minors. Yes, um, seventh and eighth grade seminar. Um, that is that. That is where our students have um, are able to survey those high school minors. So in that that long bar of all all of the minors that we have offered in the high school, um, students can sample those through both of those grades. We break those up so that they can take. Um, they can do challenges within those and it gives them a better idea about what they want to do in high school. Perfect. Thank you. And just to give you all a couple of examples. So elementary, they do a quarterly edge challenge um, and they're each are focused around a core concept. In kindergarten, we don't start with all the core concepts. Um, we start with one. There's a continuum and they build leading up to seminar where they will have learned all the core concepts. But just a couple of examples. Fourth grade um, did a design challenge around uh, learning about branding, designing shirts and Cincy shirts, which is a local uh, organization that sells all different sports t-shirts, um, then picked two winning designs and actually sold the shirts that the kids um, designed after learning about branding and such. Um, then we have in Biomed Minor, um, we had Xavier University part of this, um, and, and professors um, of population health came and did a population health challenge for our students where they had to um, they were had to look at data around uh, food deserts, um, bus routes, um, diabetes rates, obesity rates, and look at, okay, what are some correlation on the data? What trends are we seeing? What suggestions could be made um, if we do see correlations? And so that was a real problem that Xavier was looking at, real data, real research. Um, and so they presented that problem to our kids. Our kids had to work in groups uh, to research the data, to create maps, to look at correlations, and then present solutions, um, feedback, reflection throughout, of course. Um, and always a core concept focus. So I know that's quick, but just to give you a couple examples, every elementary grade level has four. Uh, seminar is challenge-based the entire year, and challenge is usually four to six weeks. And then each minor does four challenges uh, a year in their course where they're getting to do something like that uh, four times a year in these courses. Okay, I apologize, Stephanie, I got off track. Back to you. No, you're good. You're good. Um, so with defensive learning, um, we have, Sarah and I both believe that this is probably two of our most fun times of the year when we, uh, we have started with sixth and eighth grade. Um, when we say defensive learning, I know some districts call it different things. This is where our students have a, have a chance to show some of the work that they've done and that they are ready to move on to the next level. It's fantastic. Um, we have them present in front of um, a teacher, a staff member, as well as a community partner. Um, and we, we've we made some modifications on how, on that rubric as well, but it's been so great. And so they, when we are talking about these core concepts and having it being more than a poster on a wall, 
the kids are, they can speak to it. They, for each of their defensive learning presentations, they are choosing a core concept that they're going, that they have been able to prove that they've done work uh, with work within that core concept. Um, they bring up the challenges. Like uh, Sarah mentioned some of our, our sample, a, a few examples of challenges. Um, we, one of our uh, classes, one of our middle grade classes this year did a toy design challenge. I am fully expecting that that one will pop up a lot um, with our defensive learning this year. It was a really fun one um, where students had to learn from a business partner who is a toy engineer. And what is that like? How do you try and fail in, in toy design? And he talked a lot about that. That's another piece that's super important for us to, for our kids to hear is that not every um, toy, not every design, not every um, you know plan is going to work out. And so how do you start again? It's been, it's been really a great year for them. Um, so we... Um, we show have again have the students show that evidence of growth in the core concepts, um, and then looking ahead to their goals with the high school minors. Um, what can can they choose one at this time? You know, based on those classes that they took, based on the the challenges they had um, within the classes, can they make a choice about the high school minor that they would like to pursue? And you will hear some of them say, "I'm really into this one, and I'm thinking about this one too." And again, it's nice for us to have that flexibility for them. So then. And um, we have the, the defensive learning coming up for our, um, our seniors, and um, they, will, uh, they will start that work by the end of this year and be able to present in the first semester of their senior year, showing um, their, their readiness for post-secondary. Oh, and then the other important piece there too, that last bullet point. Um, so one piece of feedback that we, you know, we like to get feedback from other school districts, from colleges. We also like to hear that feedback from our students, our alumni, our recent graduates. And we were hearing that a lot, that students that were, you know, in other schools might have had evidence of what they were, um, what they'd learned throughout their high school career. And we wanted to make sure our students had that as well, something they, they can use in um, scholarship interviews and work interviews. So the students work, that challenge-based work, those defensive learning that will be recorded and uploaded. Each of the students have an edge folder um, within um, their Google Drive that they can keep. Hey, and I think um, we need to wrap up there for time's sake, but just again, um, as soon as I stop screen sharing, I'll put this link um, in the chat so that you have it. Uh, you're welcome to look through it. Uh, there is a video here um, where you can hear from some teachers and students on our EDGE page um, in an overview video. It's about three minutes and 45 seconds um, if you want to hear from some of them. Um, but there's continued work. We're always refining, just like we ask of the students. Um, we're building lab spaces that go along with a lot of the minors. So we have a lot more that we could share if you're interested, and we would love to hear um, similar things that you're doing too. So feel free um, to reach out, and Trinity, I'll turn it back over to you. Sarah and Stephanie, thank you so much for presenting today. And I know a, you had a short amount of time there. Um, and so folks that have any questions, um, please let us know. We'll get you into contact with Stephanie and Sarah. Um, and um, we will make sure that all of this information is also on our EPSO toolkit um, so that you can go back and find all of this um, after the webinar as well. So your program sounds amazing. I'm so impressed with how you've managed to take so many facets of good educational practices and meld them into one program that expands from elementary to high school. It's, it's really lovely to see. Um, I'm certain your students who have graduated have walked away with some amazing experiences um, and they're so proud of all of the work that they have done um, within the program. So thank you so much for sharing with us today, because I think it's just really kind of the future of where we're headed in education, um, being able to put all of these things into one program for our students. So this leads me into our data moment for today. So as we wrap up, um, I am going to share with you 
Um, some food for thought as we think about internships and high school students. And Beachwood talked about their students working with business partners and internships. And as you can see from this slide, internships at the college level are very prevalent, as most of us know, um, and that can lead to future career options. By giving students the chance to pursue and experience career internships in high school, we can help them build skills and connections to enhance their future prospects and skills. So I would encourage you to consider how your district, or if you are a post-secondary institution, how can you partner with your local districts to create some of these opportunities and experiences for high school students um, so that they are more prepared, um, you are more prepared, and um, we, we create a, a wonderful society of students as they graduate from high school. Um, as always, don't forget to check out our Early Post-Secondary Opportunities Toolkit. The information and resources from all of our webinars can be found there, as well as the stuff from today. It also has a wealth of information to help you grow your own early post-secondary opportunities in your secondary school districts, and it also helps to give the post-secondary institutions ways to help enhance their own programming and make those connections. Please join us on our next webinar on May 7th when we talk to Ludlow High School and Gateway Community and Technical College, and we talk about their partnership for their students and how they have helped remove some barriers so that college or so that high school students are getting some college experience while in high school. Um, no matter where they are on um, in the playing field and so that we're reaching kids where they are. And finally, before I leave you today, please stay connected with us on X. We share lots of information on our social media there through our data center and subscribe to our CPE newsletter. We're so glad that you could join us today. Please come back and see us again in May. I know it's the end of the school year for most people and you're wrapping up, but spend 30 minutes with us. I assure you, you will enjoy it. See you next month.